know what it is that makes you to cry or what it is that is giving you fear. What is the conspiracy against you? Who is the betrayer? Just pray. Let the counsels of these people turn into foolishness. And if God hears that prayers for you, then everything is settled. Psalm 61. Hear my cry, O God. Attend to my prayer. From the end of the earth, I will cry to you. When my heart is overwhelmed, this song will make a meaning to you. If you understand the heart from which song came from. We know it's a psalm of David. And I tried to figure out when he actually sang this song. What was actually about it. That David of all people would make this cry to God. What could have happened to you? That you are singing, hear my cry, O God. At least we know you to an extent that if anything has gone wrong, just go to God and say, God, this is what I want. And you just smile and leave the place. We shouldn't be seeing you crying, not at this stage of your life. And then as I looked at it, Bible scholars directed me to 2 Samuel chapter 15, verse 30. The Bible says, So David went up by the accent of the Mount of Olives, and wept as he went up, and he had his head covered, and he went barefoot. And all the people who were with him, they covered their heads and went up, weeping as they went up. Then someone told David, saying, Ahitophel is among the conspirators with Absalom. And David said, O oh Lord, I pray, turn the counsel of Ahitophel into foolishness. What kind of battle? When David had warriors, he had warriors. He was already a king. We understood or we understand when he was still kind of with Samuel, with Saul. And Saul was still the king and the king was, you know, um, looking for him and wanted to kill him. Yes, we understand. But this time around, I mean, this man had become a king, like a king. He had become a king. He had done many battles. He has done so many things. And how come? A king of his caliber. The Bible said he went up by the accent of the Mount of Olives. He, and as he went up, the Bible said he had his head covered. He went barefoot like he was not even wearing any shoe. His head was covered and he was crying. Can you imagine a king crying? going barefoot, his head covered. And as he was going, he was singing, hear my cries, O Lord. Attend unto my prayers. From the ends of the earth, I will call on you. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than high. And in this song, we could see that this man was looking for safety. He was looking for security. A man who has conquered many places, now looking for security, now looking for safety, now looking for an assurance from God that God would keep him. And if we look a bit down, we could see his son Absalom. Absalom killed Am Am Amnon, you know, story of Amnon and Tamar. And then Absalom found a way of killing Amnon after a couple of years. And then, you know, he, he, he ran away because his father, you know, was angry and everything. But then at some point he came back, you know, they brought him back. And Bible said that about 40 years, after about 40 years, the man had really grown. They have even forgotten Amnon, you know. Amnon was long forgotten. And this man had become a leader, like a leader, 
And of course, a son of the king. What else do you, you don't expect the man to, to stay behind. He had to walk and he needed to support Jerusalem or to support Israel. So he became, he became, um, he became one of the leaders. And then we don't know what suddenly came over him. Babu said he began to gather the people of Israel. He began to gather them. People in Jerusalem, he began to gather them for himself. And he told his father, he told his father a lie. He said, I'm going to Hebron. He said, I'm going there to make a sacrifice. I promised God, I made a vow that if, um, if the Lord will bring me back to Jerusalem, I will do this and do that. I'll do some sacrifice. So his father said, go in peace. And so he went to Hebron. He went to Hebron and he was from Hebron. He started to gather people from Jerusalem. He was bringing them over. And the father did not even think anything was going on. And so by the time he gathered people, and the people he was gathering did not even realize that he was gathering them against his father. And so because he was gathering them very easily, they yielded and they were answering him. But they did not really understand what he was gathering them for. And the Bible said, that when he was like fully loaded, like he was, you know, fully, he called, he, he shouted that, you know, he was the king. He said they should shout him as the king. And you know, people, whoever is king, is just king. So if he said we should call him king, then he's ready to kill his father. Then, you know, and that was how they supported him. And when David heard, that Sir Absalom had made himself the king while he was still alive. If he was alive, if he wanted to become king, he would make his father to make him a king. It is not by himself that he will proclaim himself a king. So the father was still alive and then he proclaimed himself a king, which means he was ready to kill the king, the father. And when David heard this, David became afraid for some reason. He became very, very afraid. And I will tell you why he was afraid. He became very afraid. Obviously, there were still some people with him. And so immediately he saw this. Bible said, um, kill the, strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. So the people that were with him, they, everybody knew if they captured David, they are all gone. So they needed to protect him. And he himself, the, um, the people he was saying, begin to move into the wilderness because Absalom must not catch up with us here. And so they be, he began to move the few people that he had. He began to move. He was crying and he was moving them. He was moving them. Even the priest. Zadok, or what did they call his name? He was re ready to go. And when Zadok said, this is the ark of God, do we carry the ark of God and we begin to run away? Ah, he said, it's not like that. Let me run. The ark of God must not run away. It is not possible. So the priest and the ark of God stay back in Jerusalem. If it is the will of God for me, to be back. I'll be back to see it and to see where the ark of God is. But you cannot run away as I'm running away. It is an abomination for God to run away from people. So he said, leave, you stay back in Jerusalem. And then he, by the time he knew what was going on, his prophets, Ahitophel, they had taken him. I don't understand how, but somehow they took him. And that was like the last bit of it. That if this one was gone, it will only take, it will only take God. Because very easily, Ahitophel will even tell them where he is. Ahitophel will tell them all the secrets. Ahitophel will tell them, do it this way, do it that way. And the man will be gone. And so when he knew that Ahitophel had gone, he prayed one prayer. He said, Lord, turn the counsel. It's not even about his safety now because he knows if the counsel of Aitofel can become foolishness, 
they will not get him. That was like his safety. You know, his prophet. That was the last, you know, the protection that he had. And he prayed that prayer. Bible said he went up the mountain of olives. And as he was going, he was crying. But he made a prayer. He said, Lord, the cancers of Ahitophel, please turn this into foolishness so that Ahitophel will be useless. And God had his cries. God saw him. God had his cries. And then we try to wonder what could have happened to a man like this? The man that killed a lion and bear? The man that killed Goliath? He was not afraid of the lion. He was not afraid of the bear. In actual fact, if he did not talk about it, it would not have been recorded. It was like to him it was nothing. He was just tending the sheep. The lion came. He killed the lion. Nobody knew. And it would never have been in record if he did not say that when the lion came, he killed it. When the bear came, he killed it. And then Goliath, he killed Goliath. The man that danced so much before God, that, you know, everybody was wondering. Even his wife could not believe that a man could dance like this. His wife was angry, but God was happy. A man that could dance like that before God, all of a sudden, getting to this point of his life, and he had to cry. I don't know what it is that makes you to cry, or what it is that is giving you fear. What is the conspiracy against you? Who is the betrayer? Even the psalmist says, that the people of my household has lifted up their heel against me. Who is the person that has lifted up his heel against you? Just pray. Let the counsels of these people turn into foolishness. And if God hears that prayers for you, then everything is settled. But one thing we knew about David was that by this time, he was not working so much anymore. He was not going into battle anymore. The few battles that he fought before then was saying something like he was exhausted or he was tired. When circumstances of life begin to make a man feel tired, then watch. When life makes you tired and you feel your duty post is neglected, then watch. The idle hands the devil makes use of. When the hands are idle, when you leave your duty post. Many years ago, just before I got married, my husband assistant called me and he said, he said he doesn't want to tell my husband that I shouldn't tell him, but I should pray. <laughs> and he said, he said some things are going to happen. Sometimes my husband, like, when we remember this, we, just, we, we laugh, you know. And we not love, but give thanks to God. And then he said, there are certain things that are going to happen. He said, it is a test of faith. He said, if he can pass this test, he said, God will help him. But he didn't say anything about failure. But he said, if he can. He said, so my prayer should be that that test, he should pass it. He said, but that incident is not negotiable. He said, it's going to happen. And this is a young bride planning wedding. And because he said he didn't want to tell him, I now ran to his prayer partner. And I told him, I said, this is what this person has said. And we knew this person as a prophet. You know, we're all young. But we knew this person, if he talks, he's just a prophet. His prayer partner said, number one, I should make sure I tell him so that I don't hide anything from him. Number two, there is nothing prayer cannot stop. So as we were getting married, we were getting married into this incident. I can't tell you what happened. I was pregnant. I was fasting. I prayed as if my life depended on it. I prayed hard. When young brides were supposed to be um, still doing honeymoon, I was fighting battles. I prayed, prayed, prayed. 
This thing still happened though. Remember they have said it must happen. That is going to happen. So, but I prayed, prayed, prayed. And so when this thing were coming and I saw the hand like, you know, that these things were going on, I didn't pray anymore. When I saw the result, I didn't pray anymore. And from May to July, like three months, I did not say good morning to Jesus. I wake up and I'll just be like normal, like normal. And I felt normal, like it was like there was no God. Like if there was God, you would have answered. So if you do not answer, then there's no God. So why are we praying? There's no point praying. That was how I stopped. Sometimes I'll see my husband praying. I'll just be looking. By then, I, don't, I didn't care anymore. Like, what else? You've done it, you've done it, you know? You've done it. I prayed, prayed, fasted. What else do you want, oh God? And my child was running on to a year by this time. It was going to a year. I had my baby. Baby was turning to one year. And then we had our first year birthday. The Tuesday after. Because the birthday was not celebrated on that day, on the day she, will, she um, became one. So the Tuesday immediately after that party. <laughs> so I was passing in Lagos at Ojotao. I crossed the road. As I crossed the road, I heard a noise. I saw touts. And I ran back to the road. And there was an oncoming car that hit me. And I fell on the floor. Everybody thought it was over. The story I had was that they all ran away. So when people ran away, the person, you know, to cut a long story short, there was a man that stood. And the man said, he thought I was his child. And when he got to me, he saw this was not his child. And he was going to leave. And then something pinned him down to say, if this was your child, what would you do? And at that stage, he was glued there. And he helped me. Took me to the hospital. Went to our church to tell them. Went to my house to tell them. Obviously, the pastor was not around. Like always, he's always been like that. <laughs> pastor was not there. <laughs> My daughter and the house help were there at home, and then our landlord's wife. So when he came, it was the landlord's wife that told him that somebody came, your wife is, you know. So he had to look for me from wherever. And then when I came back, I came back to live at about probably 8 p.m. thereabouts. And when I opened my eyes, I saw people. There was POP already, and a part of my head was bald. Long story short, me that did not say, good morning, Jesus. I knew I had been given a second chance to live. So I told myself, even if the last breath will come out, this God, I will still serve this God. And so without anybody preaching, without anybody counseling, I ran back to God. I went back to my duty post. Nobody needed to tell me. I went back there and I started to serve God. Even when your faith is failing, your service to God is your connection to your maker. And if that connection breaks, Bible says break the edge, the serpent will bite. If any man breaks the edge, the serpent will come in. Whether you are a Christian, you are whatever you are. And since that time, I have not left my duty post. Even when I don't have any work to do in church, I'll go to another department, I will work there. I have made up my mind that this life will serve God. It does not mean I am 100% fully of faith. It does not mean my belief is so high that anybody cannot get there. But it means I am connected to God and nobody can break into the edge. And so my question will be to you today will be, 
What is your connection? What is your service to God? Hold on to your service. So that when the tempter comes, the accuser of the brethren, the one that walks to and fro, looking for what is not lost, when he comes, you are fully secured. It does not mean he will not come. Even to Jesus Christ, he still came. So if he came to Jesus, who says he will not come to you? And so what part of your life is it that looks as if the betrayer has come? That looks as if you are being conspired against? Is it in your family life? Is it in your place of work? Is it in your business life? What phase of your life is it that it looks like even demons are conspiring against you? I read a book many years ago when the Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. It is true. When you see yourself sleeping, when you are not supposed to be sleeping, there could be a demon. And I'm telling you, and there are small, small demons. Some will come in form of cockroach. Some will come in form of rat. Some will come in form of animals. Little, little things. Because they know that this one is small to get. Um, this particular life is small to get. Let's just send one of the small demons. And one insect will just enter your room. Before you know it, what you are not supposed to do, you are, you are sleeping. When you are supposed to be praying, you'll be sleeping. Or you say you are tired. One thing or the other. Laziness will come in. Something will come in. It is because those little, little things, they are there. And what they are there to do, they know they may not be able to get you. But they know your point of weakness. Let's take him at the point of weakness. And if we can get him there, then there will be no problem. But your service to God will always connect you. David at this time, and he was becoming exhausted. It was like he, he, he was like he was already in a comfort zone. And so for him, he didn't need to fight battles anymore. He was sending his um, deputies to war. He had begin, begun to send Joab, you know, to send them to war. And he would stay back at home. And so when this battle came, probably... He was beginning to lose sense of how to even fight the battles. He didn't know where to pick it from. And so when Absalom rose up, he did not know what to do. And Bible said, he went by the mountain of Holies. He took people with him and he was crying and saying, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than high. But one thing with God, like they sang for us today, they said he will leave the 99. And one, that particular one that is weak and weary, when you call on God, he will still run after you. Let's rise up on our feet.